folks out there in beer land and welcome to this week's edition of Beer Reactions. I'm here with my friend Paul and we're going to talk about this week's beer that we're going to be testing where we're going to be looking for a beer champion. We're looking for our beer of the year 2019. Now we've already got two beers we have. last week. Well, shall we just recap what we did last week? We should, shouldn't yeah, we? let's just recap on those. So, last week we tried Loch Lomond Brewery's American Pale Ale, mm -hmm. and we scored that 14 out of 20. A lovely beer, a lovely and beer, if you get followed, a chance to try it. Yeah. It was followed up by Polly's Brew Company's On and On and On, which was a lactose IPA, and we gave that 17 out of 20. So, what we need to do this week is see if this week's beers can outdo those two. Indeed. Yeah. So, should we unveil the ale? Let's unveil, unveil the ale. Aha. Ahahaha, what you got there? Ooh. I, for your delectation this week, Mr Sutherland, have brought a vocation brewery, Pride and Joy Pale Ale. Oh, nice. Do I see mango and peach or mango and pear or something? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute, shall we? Okay. Well, I've brought along a Cloudwater Brew Company's Soft and hazy, ready to drink. Soft and hazy, ready to drink. Indeed. Well, there, that sounds lovely. So, shall we talk about what it says on the cans first, so that we can get an initial reaction? Okay. What do you think? Well, tell us a little bit about yours, Johnny. Well, if I can just get my notes up and running. <laughs> right, Vocation Pale Ale. Let's have a look. Is this called Pride and Joy? And I'm going to bring it up to the camera so you can see the can. We always do this, just so you can have a look at it, so if you ever see it, you'll know what we're talking about. This is Pride and Joy by Vocation Brewery. Now, Vocation Brewery is in Hebden Bridge in West Yorkshire. Okay. Um, it was opened in 2015, and it's got a pretty wide range of beers already uh, on sale, but they also have two taproom bars. Ah, one in Hebden Bridge itself, okay, and yep. one in Leeds City Centre. Ah, very good. Now, this is an American Pale Ale. Um, they don't stay on it what they use uh, to make it, but I guess it's going to be American varieties of hops. They don't. There's no ingredients, yes. I and mean, I've even looked online to try and find out what the ingredients are, but it doesn't actually say. Um, so if you're from Vocation Brewery, drop us a note or... We would very much like to find out what you put in this. Let us know in the comments below. Indeed. Um, the state that Pride and Joy builds to a generous but clean bitterness. Oh, mm. yeah. Flavours and aromas of mango. Oh, Citrus, nice. earthy pine, I can only assume that's coming from the hops, tropical fruit and blueberry. Oh, that's really that's, unusual. I've never heard that before, yeah. With an ABV of 5.3, so this little beer should pack quite a punch. Quite like it. So it'll be interesting to see if that like is what it tastes like. So, Good. what about yours? Okay, well let me just show this uh, kind of beer to the camera. Now hopefully you can see that. So this is Cloudwater Breweries. Soft and hazy, ready to drink. Now, let me tell you a little bit about it. So, Cloudwater Brewery are uh, a brewery from Manchester, so not too far away from Hebden Bridge. Mm, Hebden Bridge, no, not really. No. Um, it founded it in 2014, so. <laughs> Only a year earlier. <laughs> Just a year so, earlier. So, some two reasonably new breweries. Now, they're quite an interesting company in that they, are an, they claim to be an ethically run business. Right. Their aim is to support and nurture food, drink and creative communities in Manchester. Very good. So pretty interesting. And they produce hundreds of beers and many of the beers they produce are one-offs. Right. And they also have two tap rooms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is purely coincidental. This wasn't planned. This wasn't planned. They have a tap room in Manchester and a tap room in London as well. Right. Wow. So pretty interesting. So in terms of ingredients, um, it doesn't say what malts they use, but I'm guessing... It's um, a pale, a pale, uh, a pale malt and perhaps a lager malt because it is. Uh, is it an IPA? Let's just check. Does it say blah 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 blah? It's a pale ale. So it's yes, pale, pale malt. Possibly it's a pale malt. Possibly wheat. And in terms of hops, there's one, two, three, uh, three types of hops. The first one's Nelson Sorghum, right. which is a bittering hop from New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Then we've got El Dorado, which is a, not a hop I'd heard of before. It's a hop from Yakima Valley in Washington State, and wow. that's a new variety of hop. It's only been around since uh, 2010. 
and it has bold tropical flavours. Um, it's used as a as a bittering hop Great. as well as an aroma hop. So it'll so be interesting to see if these beers live up to these descriptions. That would right. say. I mean, in terms of expectations, um, it's a. I'm expecting this won't be quite as bitter as last week's milkshake IPA. Um, <laughs> I'm not bitter about it, believe me. <laughs> and it won't be the milkshake IPA. It had lactose in it. <laughs> but a brilliant description, milkshake IPA. The can says it has juicy tropical fruit flavours with punchy, resinous hop notes. So actually it sounds kind of similar, similar to, to the pine. Yeah, to the pine and it claims to have lingering tangerine and lime flavours. Right. So not blueberry. Tangerine and lime. Pretty similar. And it's only 4.2%. So it doesn't. I didn't know, I said this was 5.3. No, it's got lots of punch, yeah. yeah. So, um, not quite a session beer, but certainly I'm quite excited about I'm, quite, it. I'm looking forward to trying that. So, one. which beer will we go for first? I think we, we should do yours first. Right. So, should we do the pour? Let's pour. Ready? Yep, yeah, ready. Oh, oh, no, not too much of a hiss. I expected more of a okay. So we're going, we're going for a flat pour, aren't we? We're going for it's it's intelligent to you. We, 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 in a previous episode, we did discuss about the carbon break, but we've since had comments from people saying, well, I always pour with my glass tilted, and it, it, it really makes a difference. But I suppose we could say it's each their own, what you prefer to do. I prefer to have a carbon break on it, uh, a CO2, what they call a CO2 break. Some people prefer to get a smaller head, but I suppose that's a personal preference. That looks extraordinarily good. It's great. So it it smell, I can smell that actually. No, it does say on the can that it's soft and hazy, and it does look. It is hazy. Hazy, doesn't it? Wow. I've got things flying around tonight, Paul, in here. These little flying creatures are after the beer, I think. It's the balmy Scottish weather, John. It is, yeah. Look at that. Okay, wow. Let's just show that to the camera. So we can get a wee look at that. Wow, looking nice. So, I'm getting pineapple. I'm, so, I'm getting pineapple from that. Oh, there's definitely some tropical fruit flavors yeah, from that, isn't there? Most definitely. Yeah, definitely. Mm. That is really that's. If, I wish you could smell that, folks. That that does. It's it's. There's so much tropical aroma coming from that. It's, it's like a tropical fruit salad. It is. I, I think it's kind of pineapple. I mean, they said tangerine and a lime, but that was a lingering tangerine yeah. lime. Yeah, the, the, the aroma when you're smelling it to it me is tasty. definitely pineapple. So, let's have a little taste. Cheers! <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, John. That is blissful. That is really nice. That is really nice. There's not the same bitterness coming through from the, either of the ones we had last week. It's a sweetness. It starts off with a sweet. It's almost a, to me, it's a slight biscuity flavour right at the beginning. And then you get that massive punch of, of tropical flavours coming through with a, a, a citrusy finish. Yeah, I get that biscuity flavour. Right at the beginning. It's right just the a, the right, right at the beginning. And then it's immediately followed up with this this beautiful tropical. It's almost like a cocktail. Interestingly, in terms of condition, it's not very fizzy, but that's okay. Yeah, normally, normally from a, a a canned beer, or certainly from a, a I would expect yeah. a, a beer to be a little bit fizzy, but actually, that, this is not, and that's reflected. It's smooth. It's almost like a, 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 a smooth beer. What a nicer way to listen to rain hitting the roof. <laughs> the, the rain's, rain's just, just folks. <laughs> the rain's just come on. We so, do we do do this program from from a remote part of Southwest Scotland where we get a lot of rain. So you might have to get used to that as the series progresses. <laughs> so if you have tasted um, the Cloudwater Brew Company's uh, soft and hazy ready to drink, let us know in the comments below what you think of it. I mean, certainly. From us, in terms of the, the aroma, it's absolutely fantastic. In it terms is. of the flavour, it's possibly less 
I was going to say less exciting, but that's not yeah, no, that, not that's, right. that's that's not fair. It does have that sort of biscuity flavour um, at first. In that's terms in of the colour, it is certainly you know. It almost easy. looks like a Belgian wheat beer. It does it? look like a Belgian wheat yeah. beer. But and in the, terms of condition, oh, like they've the just switched the rain off. <laughs> but it does taste like a cocktail to me. You know, sometimes you have a cocktail and you get that that sort of tropical flavour, the sort of punch. Mm. There is definitely a um, can kind of really nice sort of fresh aftertaste. I like that. Almost a bit grassy. I say that. Mm. Most hoppy beers that are a bit grassy, but that's just me. Mm. That's lovely. Great, so shall we score it? Scores in the doors, what do you think, Jono? Uh, only because of a personal preference to, I, I tend to lean towards more bitter tasting beers. It's quite sweet, that for me. I'm going to give that a six. Interestingly enough, I was going to give that a six as well. Right, okay. So, Cloudwater Brew Company, that doesn't mean it's a, it's a bad beer. This is a very good, very drinkable beer. It's a beer. beautiful beer. And if I was in a pub on a sunny afternoon, I could do a few Definitely, beers. definitely. Absolutely no bother that. at all. Lovely. But it's, and all this is just based on our personal preferences. It's, it's, it bears no reflection on the beers at all. This is why we call it Beer Reactions. It's our reactions. We'd also like you to tell us in the comments what beers you've been uh, enjoying this week and tell us what you think of them so maybe we can try them in future episodes. Indeed. 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 So, so we've got a 12 out of 20 there. 12 out of 20. Well done, Cloudwater Brewing Company. Brilliant. Okay, Jono. Let's have a look at your beer then. Right, so let's do a pour. Let's get pouring. Oh, we have a bit that. of a hiss. There's definitely a bit of a hiss. Okay. Do you want a flat pour or do you want a straight yeah, pour? Yeah, give me a flat pour. Very similar colour to the last beer we had. It is, yeah. But absolutely clear as a whistle by the looks of things. It's quite a small can. It's interesting that you're starting to see, you know, three thirty uh, mil cans, craft yeah. beers and and real ales appearing in smaller cans. Yeah, it is. And you know, it's it's good. Sometimes you just want a small beer. Sometimes you want a big beer. You do, yeah. Um, but interestingly enough, when you look at this beer, it's in a three thirty mil can, but it does have an ABV of five point three percent. Yeah, I think for a stronger beer, I think you probably want a smaller. Smaller bottle. So, let's just show this to the camera. Please we? do, please show it to the camera. Okay, here we go. Looking good. That has got a beautiful smell. That's that's not quite as tropical as the last beer in terms of its smell. But no, it's pretty it's not. good all the same. And I said this one, it doesn't say what hops they use in it. Um, but it's an American pale ale, isn't it? It's an American pale ale. Um, I'm assuming that they're using American hop varieties, simply because they're calling it American pale ale. But they do say the grist they use, the grist, by the way, is the grains that they use in the mash tun, um, is both malt and barley and wheat. Oh, okay. So okay. Um, that's all we know about it, really. It don't, they, don't, they don't state what yeast mm. or what hops are in there, other than what the flavours they're expecting to get, which to say again, is mango, citrus, earthy pine? Possibly. Possibly, yeah. yeah. But definitely, definitely, definitely tropical fruit. Yeah, I'm getting tropical fruit off that. Very much so. They do say blueberry as well, but I can't say I've got blueberry yet. I'm gonna Maybe that's go. in the taste. I'm going to have to go for the taste. That's in the taste. Cheers. Cheers. Now then, oh. there is, there definitely is some sort of sweet berry taste there. You getting that? It's more bitter than the previous beer. It is more bitter. There's no bis bis biscuitiness. There's no biscuitiness in that. Um, so what get, gives you the biscuity flavour in, in, in beer? It's usually the malt. It's, yeah. your, it's, your, it's a heavy malt bill. Um, Sometimes you get the biscuit flavour from how if you've had a step to mashing process, for instance, so you 
We're going to generally increase oh, the temperature okay. really? through, through, your, mm. through your brew. So you want to pull out more of those those um, those malt flavours in a more slow yep. mashing yep. process. You gradually increase the temperature as you as you as you're mashing your, your I'm, grist. I'm definitely getting a kind of after a lingering aftertaste of um, of fruit. I think. Mm. There's a bit of resinous to me there as well. It's, I, 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 can't, I can't put my finger on it, but there is, it's almost like a, 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 a bitter, it's like some sort of resin. Well, there is a pininess to it, but it's in the flavour rather than the Yeah, it's the not aroma. the smell, it's the flavour of it. It's almost like when you take a basil leaf, I know it's just, I, I, it doesn't taste like basil, but it's the same sort of, when you take a basil leaf and you crunch it up in your teeth, it's you get quite a strong flavour of basil, yeah. basil leaf if you can. Not in the beer, yeah. but it's... No. it's it's that you, there's something in there, and I can't quite put my finger on it. Maybe that is that's what they mean by the the earthy pine, mm. perhaps. And the condition of this beer is lovely as well. It is. It's really, it's got a real nice, um, I say it's like a kind of medium fizz that's on it. It's really nice. It is. It's got a it's got a beautiful effervescence about it. Now I wonder, I wonder if it's it's a it's a little bit of. Um, I'm getting things that there is something in, in there, so yeah. I wonder if it's if it's live canned. This beer is unpasteurised and unfiltered yeah, and may contain go. sediment. So it's a live beer when it's gone in the can, which is extremely interesting. Because normally you tend to get that in bottled beers, but I've not seen it in a can yet. Yeah, I mean I don't know if that's um, I guess there's a reason why you shouldn't uh, put a live beer um, in a can. No, I guess not. I think the it can would probably <laughs> withhold more pressure than a bottle, would it? I would, I would I imagine. Don't I don't I'm know. sure viewers should be quick to let us know in the comments let, yeah, below. <laughs> indeed, let us know. Help what you educate us, please, if you can. Yeah, we we are learning just like everybody else um, about what you know what the processes are for these types of things. I mean, so that's right. I mean, we're asking ourselves questions through this that you know we haven't considered before. But I'm sure some of you guys will. Which is which is the purpose. Um, of, of this uh, this mm. this uh, this group really is to is to, to educate and inform about beer beer processes and so what let's, be. let's just a quick recap on this so in terms of aroma it's got a lovely sort of tropical <sighs> aroma but not quite as strong as the last beer we tried not quite as strong and there's definitely there's definitely a citrus in terms of the flavour it is more bitter than the last yeah. beer we tried and there's there's a, to me there's, a, nice a, there's there's some there's some resinous Bitterness. There is, there is yeah. a resinous flavour to it as well, and in terms of colour, beautiful light colour. I think I think there must be you know like a lager malt uh, used as well as a well, pale malt. I think possibly it's too yeah. pale just to be a. I don't say again. Yeah, I don't malt. think. Or does it? No, this, this is the wheat and pale malt. Oh, it could be the wheat. Yeah, it? it could. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Okay, yeah. so yeah. scores of the malt, barley, and wheat. Uh, well, I suppose. Shall I go it's first? bitter. It's bitter. You go first. I, I, I'm feeling a bit guilty because I'm going to give this um, a five out of ten. Um, yeah, that's simply because I think on reflection I preferred the first beer that we tasted. Okay. I, I really enjoyed the biscuitis, biscuitiness of the previous beer we tasted. Um, well, I'm I'm going to give this a higher than five for two reasons. It's more bitter, mm -hmm. so it's it suits me, me a little bit better because it's more bitter, bitter, better, bitter, better. But I also like the fact that it's gone into the can unpasteurised. Yeah. So it's more to me like the types of beer we make. Indeed, that's true. Really. That's true. So I'm, I'm going to pump it up to an eight. Ooh. Now you do the maths. That's quite a strong score. <laughs> so that's 13. 13. 13 out of 20. That's really good. So now that means that this beer is our beer of the week. This is the beer of the week. So that means this is our beer of the week. Well done to Vocation Brewery. Vocation Brewery, excellent. So let's a quick recap of our scoreboard, will we? We've got um, Polly's Brew Co at uh, in first place with their definitely still seventeen out of twenty. In second place, we've got Loch Lomond Brewery with their American Pale Ale. Close behind, we've got Vocation Brewery yeah, on thirteen 13. points with their Pride and Joy, and then last but last not least. Not least it's Cloudy Water Brew Company with their soft and hazy pale ale. 
at 12. Uh, 12 points. Very good. So hopefully for a future show, John, we'll get the scoreboard that we really need. <laughs> we will indeed. Cheers. Cheers. Now this time round, it's time for us to try and search for our home crafted hero of 2019. So it reminds us again, John, what's a home crafted hero? A home crafted hero is somebody that brews their own beer in the luxury of their own home. <laughs> <laughs> the luxury being that you know, all you have to do is pay for the ingredients and you get quite a lot of beer at the yeah, end Yeah, you of do, it don't you? That you can do. be exceptional quality, as we found out last week when we tested out my pink kiln porter. We did, that's right. Can you remember, what did we score the pink kiln porter? We didn't week? score! Oh, we didn't score. We decided it was not. We thought it would be beers. a bit smug to score our own beer, but oh. what we'd really like is for you to send in your home crafted beers so that we can try them. You'd have to send in a lot; just a little bottle will do, and then we can test it out, and then we can mark it out at ten. Yeah, subscribe to the channel and get in touch with us um, through YouTube or through Facebook. Um, look for beer reactions, and we'll let you know where to send your uh, home crafted beer. Grand. So this week. We're going to try one of my beers. Now, Jono's beer was exceptionally good last time around. This beer oh, thank you very might much, not be quite so good. Let me introduce no, it to you. No, I learned everything I know about beer brewing from Paul. This is a bottle of Little Brown Mouse. Let me show you. Now, this is a beer that's inspired by the Gruffalo. Let me just read you the blurb here. Little Brown Mouse is a nut brown ale inspired by the mouse from the children's book, The Gruffalo. In his search for a tasty nut, the mouse outsmarts the mighty Gruffalo. If the Little Brown Mouse drank beer, this is the beer he would drink. It's nut brown in colour and deliciously light to drink with a hint of vanilla and toffee. Be careful though, with an ABV of 6%, this little brown mouse might just outsmart you. So it's not really suitable for children. <laughs> and we, want, <laughs> we, we want to stress that at all points, is that don't be trying any of these beers out on now, your children. What I would say is that I brewed this beer back in April and it was ready for drinking in June. Back in June it was quite good. Okay. I've been. Uh, it was very good. It was very good back in June and I've been uh, drinking, uh, drinking the rest of the keg slowly since then. And... Uh, Last weekend, I uh, put this uh, from the keg into this bottle here, so I'm not sure whether it stood the test of time since then. But in terms of ingredients, this beer's got pale malt, crystal malt, chocolate malt, and oats. Oats? Oats as well. Yeah. And oats, get, oats are there to give you head retention. Okay. But I suspect that this may have lost a bit of carbonation since it was only okay. bottled a week ago. Um, in terms of hops, we have Fuggles and East Kent Goldings, which are, of course, classic English hops. Uh, Both bitter and under Roma hops. Indeed, yeah. indeed, indeed. In terms of expectations, it's been a good beer out of the barrel, but it's been four months since the barrel was first cracked open, so it has degraded a little bit in the, that time. The only thing I would say about that is that beer that's kept in a keg, as long as you keep gas in the keg, can keep for months and months. It can, and it has been gassed uh, sort of regularly in that time. By gas, we mean you add CO2 to it. Indeed, that's right. Not a soda stream or anything like that. So in terms of taste, I think this when it was when it when it was first cracked open, it was kind of similar to Ennis's Ennis and Guns um, original beer. It in, was in that it had yeah, it those was. kind of aftertastes of vanilla. A bit caramelly, I thought actually. But it did lack a little bit of body. Mm. Uh, it did taste a little bit thin, and I've been trying to think why that is. Is it because the it perhaps wasn't mashed at the correct temperature? Have you had that before, John? A kind of thin tasting. Beer? Yes, I have. Yeah, Any I ideas? tried a step to um, a step to mash to get uh, over that. Where you start off at 50, 50 degrees, and then over three okay, stages, you get it up okay. to sixty six degrees. Now, I tell you what, I noticed that my thermometer has um, about that much um, mercury. That's separated from the main body of the of the thermometer, and I wonder if that's resulted in a mash at the at possibly. The well, if you look at yeah the gap that's in between, you really need to deduct that. Yeah, from you probably score. should do, shouldn't you? Yeah. So, let's 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 crack it open. Let's just moment. try it, shall we? Let's get pouring. This is going to be oh dear dear dear, it's a bit like tea, people. 
Oh dear. This is not good, is it? Oh dear. <laughs> this is disappointing <laughs> in the extreme. Okay, in terms of... Uh, in ter it's a it's got a good cloudy. colour. I think it's got a good colour. It's clear. In terms of aroma, actually... It's it, still very caramel. I it does taste... That. It does smell, smell quite caramel. caramelly. Yeah, it does. And I think you can smell a little bit of vanilla there as well. Yeah, definitely. There's definitely still vanilla there. Mm. I mean, I think if this had come out the keg, with the pressure of the keg, it probably it would have had, had a, quite a, a nice head. head. Yeah, it it's always worth noting, actually, if you bottle anything from a keg, is that you generally need to leave it at least six weeks for it to recondition in a bottle. Yeah, at least three to four. So the fact that this came out of a keg a week ago and put in a, a plastic bottle, just so that we could try it here, that's the point. We couldn't really bring a keg. Um, it's probably um, sound that it's death knell yeah, really about putting a plastic bottle. Well, let's have a little taste, we'll wait and see. Cheers. Cheers. Besides all that, it's still got some fizz. Definitely. There's still an effervescence in it. It is definitely caramelly. There's a caramelly flavour to it. Something a bit... Like, I'm getting apples and pears actually at the back of that. I think that's because this beer has been in the in the bottle for a week and it hasn't carbonated. And I think because it's probably started to um, go off just a little bit. And I think that's what that flavour yeah. of apple and pears is. It's it's, it's worth it's saying it's worth saying to our viewers at home that I tried this beer when it was ready for drinking straight out of the keg and it was absolutely stunningly good um i mean i think we've been talking a lot about um trying to dispel the myths around homebrew um and thinking more of homebrew as home crafted beer it's home crafted real ale it really. is it is yeah um i mean this this beer was brewed from um you know raw ingredients mm -hmm. um and straight out of the keg it was pretty good it has unfortunately lost a little bit of its sparkle and a little bit of its flavour in the time since then. We do intend to do a future episode where we'll actually go through the process of doing a home crafted beer from start to finish. Yeah. Um, it won't be a massively long episode, we'll just sort of like do the, the key stages, but at least you'll be able to see A, the sort of equipment you need, B, how easy it is to do it, and C, what you can get yeah, that's right. at the end. That's right. So I mean in terms of um in terms of beer I'm still it's, well it's still I drinkable. am still thoroughly it's still enjoying drinkable. That. I am but still I think you guys out there need to get in touch with us, send us your homebrew and certainly this is gonna be an easy one to beat. Something else you could do is if you've got a really good recipe, you know, for a beer that you, you craft at home yourself, tell us what it is. Indeed. We could have a go at it even. Indeed. You know, we could have a go at making it where we are and see if we can make it as good as oh, how good, you do. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah we could do it. You know, you know we've, we, 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 we're constantly brewing. Um, we've both got a decent setup to do to do home crafted beer, so it'd be interesting to get some new recipes yeah. that we've never tried ourselves. Great. Well, this beer is never going to be uh, the home crafted hero beer of 2019, but there will be other beers out there, so sure get there in are. touch with us yeah. and uh, send us your home brew to taste. So, this beer is definitely an easy beer for you uh, viewers at home to, 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 to beat. And uh, so get in touch in the comment section below. Send us your, send us your home crafted beer and uh, hopefully it will feature on an episode of Beer Reactions sometime soon. Slange. Slange. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>